Good morning. It's great to be with you on this beautiful, beautiful Thursday morning. It's great to also get into the Word of God. And the subject that God wants us to deal with today is our need to grow spiritually. There are many novice Christians. A novice Christian is a Christian that remains a baby. They never learn to rely upon Jesus Christ. They never trust God, and so they fall apart all the time. But God would have us grow spiritually so that we can be able to handle the things that God throws at us in the course of our lifetime. Will you bow your heads as we ask God's blessing on this very important subject? Father, we come to you and we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you for all that you teach us in your word. Your word is life, it is victory, it is what we need for every situation. Help us, Lord God, to abide by the word of God and to grow spiritually. We thank you, Lord, for this day, for each and everyone we come in contact with that we can spread the gospel to. In Jesus' name, amen. The Word of God makes it very clear that we are babies when we are born uh, again, when we receive Christ as our Savior. Spiritually speaking, we're babies. We need to take in the gospel of Jesus Christ but we can't always just deal with the gospel of Jesus. We must go on to the maturity God would have us grow into. If a child remained a baby in uh, their physical life and in their mental capacity, you would say, I'm sorry for that child. That child uh, should have been able to grow up and become more mature. So it is with a Christian. If a Christian depends on anything but Jesus Christ and never comes into maturity in Christ, then, my friends, that Christian is to be pitied. So God tells us to learn how to grow spiritually. Listen to the Word of God, Second Peter 3, Verse 18, but grow in grace. Grace is receiving something that you don't merit, you don't deserve. And grace is giving something that others don't deserve. So the first thing God wants us to do is to learn to grow in grace. Become more mature in our giving of grace to individuals, also in receiving of grace from God Almighty. It goes on, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need desperately to know Jesus. Many people know about him, but do they really know Jesus? Do they, do they really sense he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? That he is there all the time and he's there to give us understanding. He's there to give us patience. He's there to give us anything we need. We need to get to know Jesus in a fuller, richer way. It goes on. Not only in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we need to come to a place where we give him glory now and forever. We get to know him and praise him because of who he is and what he does for us. If you don't have grace, you certainly don't know Jesus. But if you do have grace, you need to mature 
in your knowledge of how to dispense that to others. Then the word of God goes on to say in second in first Peter this time, two verses two and three. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that is the gospel message, that they may grow thereby. It should be a maturing situation. Is it always that way with Christians? I'm afraid no, it is not. They remain stunted. They remain babies. They never mature to a place where they really get to know God and trust God in their daily experiences. So it is. We need not just to stay in the gospel, but to go, as I have said, to the epistles of Paul and grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ and his will for our life. Notice it says, if so, saying that they may and they may not, be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You and I can't say we haven't tasted that the Lord is gracious. He's been so gracious to every one of us. So if we've tasted, to me, it became a taste and I wanted more. And therefore, I began to mature in my understanding of the grace of God. I received a taste, and the taste was good. So I desired to know more, and therefore I began to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Have you liked the taste of the grace of God? If you have delve into knowing more about it so you can not only receive it for yourself because you need it but give it to others the word of god says in second timothy 2 15 these very important words study to show yourself approved unto god what am i studying i'm studying the word of god but I'm not just studying the Word of God. I'm applying it to my life, and it becomes part of my thinking. And I begin to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So studying, and that word means study to exhaustion, the wonderful Word of God. And it goes on to say, be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed because you fall apart all the time. You're not receiving the word of God and living in the word of God. You are just simply falling apart because it's not being applied in your life. You haven't really learned it. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Some people use the word of God for living in sin. And you can't do that. That's not right. Some people wrongly divide the word of God. They misinterpret it. They take a verse from here and they don't find out what it's saying in the context. So they make it what they want it to say. So they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Therefore, my friends, study with the intention of really understanding what the Word of God is saying to you and letting that Word transform the way you live. Then we go to 1 Timothy 4.15. Meditate. That means mull it over in your mind. Keep thinking about it. Meditate meditate on these things give thyself wholly to them really learn the word of god don't just read it really become those who know the word of god and apply it to their life they may see 
that it is profiting them that listen to you and find in you a person that really believes the word of God and you're acting on that premise that the word of God is true and therefore I do not have to carry a burden that the word of God says to give to him. I can deliver it to God and then I can forget about it. Hebrews 6, 1, verse, uh, the first part of it, excuse me. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, you need salvation. If you're saved, you don't need salvation, you've got it. Let us go on to maturity. Let us go on to maturity. So it's saying to us over and over again, listen. Don't just learn it, become it. Rely upon it. Make it the way you actually think and live. And you will profit from it, and so will others profit from it. And then we go back to Second Peter 1, verses 5 to 8. And we have God's further teaching on this spiritual growth. And besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. You see what it's saying? You don't just have virtue, you add something to it. You add faith to it, believing God and believing him without question. That's true faith. So you add to virtue, faith, and faith, knowledge, and, and uh, knowledge, temperance, and uh, temperance, patience, and patience, godliness. You're adding to it. You're growing. You're not just remaining stagnant. Too many Christians stay at one level too long. We are to grow, continue to grow, continue to grow until we have grown into maturity. And it takes time, but God wants us to do that. And he says, if I say you can do it, you can do it. So you rely upon his power to even grow. It goes on to say into godliness, you've added everything to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, unconditional love. You see, you're always maturing in the faith, and you're practicing what you have become in the light of Christianity and others. Then the Word of God goes on to say, For if these things be in you, you have become them. You're not just learning about them. You're not just spouting them off. But you have become them and others see these things in you. Now notice. And they abound. They make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You become a fruit-bearing Christian. Now, if you don't add these things to you, you don't become a fruit-bearing Christian. You've got to plan on God giving you the grace and you doing it in direction to the direction of God in your life, adding, adding, adding these different things to your life you will become great fruitful Christians. You will have the fruit of the Spirit. People will look to you because of your maturity in Christ, because you have grown. And they look forward to something that's grown that's in the process of growing. It encourages them to grow as well. Well, the Word of God goes on to say on this very important subject, 
Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 19. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know where my strength is coming from. I know where my victory is coming from. I know it has been a work of grace in my life. And I want God to continue to give me the maturity of that grace. The Word of God says, Because of this I bow my knee to the one that gave it to me, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Jesus. Jesus is the name of the family of God. That Jesus would grant you according to the riches of his glory and he wants to friends he desires to to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man so that i can do all things through christ that strengtheneth me i want to give god the glory for what he has done in my life and strengthening me and maturing me as i seek to add these things that God has told me to add to my life. Notice this, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. It isn't by sight. It's by faith that he dwells there. I believe Jesus is in me because he said he would be in me. So that means I've got all the power of God at my disposal because I am a child of Almighty God. That's faith without conditions. Goes on, that ye being rooted and grounded in God's love. You see, God loves you. And he's not going to say something to you that you cannot or will not be able to possess. If he says you take this path to maturity, you will be mature when I'm through with you because I love you. I love you. It goes on. May be able to comprehend with all the other people of God what is the breadth, what is the length, what is the depth, and what is the height of God's measure of grace. And to know, not to be acquainted with, but to actually know in the inner man the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. It's something God would reveal to you as he revealed to uh, Paul, excuse me, as he revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's something that passes knowledge and God reveals to you. And you will know the love of God that God gives you understanding of, which is surpassing any knowledge he could give you, physically speaking. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's God's desire. That's God's desire for you and for me. Now, we'll conclude with this set of verses from Ephesians. Ephesians 4, 14 to 15. God wants to bring you to spiritual maturity to the point where this verse, or these two verses, become something that's real in your life. Hear it. That we henceforth be no more children, We've grown up into spiritual a spiritual walk with God. We've grown up to a place where we believe God just because God said it, not because he's got to show it to us. We become spiritually mature children that he, excuse me, not carried or tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine 
There are a lot of doctrines out there that are not from God. And a lot of people are being tossed to and fro because they don't know who to, who, who to believe. <clears throat> In other words, let's believe the word of God and stop listening to people that con are contrary to the word of God. Look, it goes on. They try to get us off believing the word of God by their slight of hand, their cunningness, their craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive us. Who are they? They are people that are indwelt by Satan, sent by Satan to contradict the word of God. This will apply to some people, but it doesn't apply to you. That is a terrible statement from Satan himself. All the word of God is true for you, as well as for me, as well as for any other believer. The word of God speaks the truth. Those that come against us are those that speak the lie. So learn to abide in the word of God. Notice it concludes in this way, but speaking the truth in unconditional love that grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. So speaking the truth in love, but speaking the truth. The Bible is the truth. Speaking the truth in love, notice this, and growing into him in all things. In other words, I believe God. I believe God. I believe his word. I do not let people wrestle his word to cause me to unbelieve what it's saying. And they say it's saying something it isn't saying. It is not saying that uh, the things that they peddle, it is saying exactly what it is saying. It is written for the common man. It is written for the common person. And thus, it is not saying something under the under the table, so to speak. It's right out there in the open. And what it says, it means. So now, I'm a baby when I get saved. But I'm not to remain a baby. I'm to grow by believing more of the Word of God every day, applying more of the Word of God every day, and living by the word of God every single day. Are you growing that way? Are you becoming more mature? Are you trusting God more? Are you simply relying on the truth of his word more and more every single day? I hope so. And if you're not, why not? Start today. God bless you until we have this opportunity once again.